My name is Monty Alexander, Montgomery Bernard Alexander, Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. People say, Jamaica, you mean where the racetrack is? Nope, the one down in the islands, where the spirit of the Caribbean, West Indies, is a big part of our American culture. So many of our musical heroes are from the West Indies. You know, I recently did an album playing the songs of Thelonious Monk, songs, melodies, tunes, and I realized that Monk grew up in an area where there were lots of West Indians, and I know, and I could feel it in those tunes. They were all from the Caribbean, playing the Calypso beat, ska, all these rhythms. And I did the album where I brought imaginary version of Monk's music with Jamaica. And it was kind of a happy result to put it mildly. Where's my record? Monty Alexander plays Monk, Warwick Hill. So I'm honored that this came out and it came out as well as it did. Rasta Monk vibration. Now, on this occasion, I'm delighted to speak to the folks who are about the support for the Jazz Forum up there in Tarrytown. And um, I shall just meander as I go along because I don't have anything specific to say. I'm thanking the Jazz Forum sponsor, Monte Fiore. That's a great name, Monte Fiore. <laughs> yeah, Monte, right? So, um, piano playing is my main thing. And um, as I look back at songs to play, there is a beautiful piece of music that I recorded some years ago, written by pianist John Lewis, who started out being the pianist in Dizzy Gillespie's orchestra. And he wrote this almost like a, an anthem, a lament about Django Reinhardt. So I'm gonna have a go at Django, and I'll stop talking. I Wait, talk too I'll much. Turn off the air conditioning. Oh man, there's a Sorry, air... the air conditioning is on. So That's Katarina the over there, right? No more buzz. Okay, Sorry. no more buzz. <laughs> All right, so here I go, trying to remember Django. It's a solemn thing.
Django, yeah, I heard that piece played by the Modern Jazz Quartet, which of course included the great Vibis Milt Jackson, who I had the great honor of playing music with and making several albums with Milt. And Django was this classic piece of music, and I recorded it with Milt. And, um, this evokes for me the memory of those men that came out of Dizzy's orchestra that were about the classic music. Percy Heath, Con, uh, originally Kenny Clark, John Lewis on piano, and Milt Jackson. And the original bassist was Ray Brown, who I also made a lot of recordings with. So, anyhow, a pleasure to play these pieces for the folks here. And um, lots of tunes I've composed, and I'm going to have a go at, uh, let's see, I wrote a tune called Look Up. I'm going to have a go at Look Up, one of, uh, one of my tunes. It's not this particular collection, but here we go. I'm going to play a little Look Up. And Look Up is this idea of positive thinking. Instead of looking down, we look up. Look up to the sky. Look up.
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, get out of breath when I play my look up song, folks. Yeah. So I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. A lot of excitement there. And um, you know, being from Jamaica, I really value songs that come out of that region. And of course the great exponent of great songs in the idiom known as reggae was Bob Marley. And I I have a, a sense of honor when I play the next song I'm going to play. A medley of Bob Marley's redemption song and No Woman No Cry. Thank you very much for those uh, two songs. Well, glad I played those two songs. I enjoy very much. 
and um, I would now have a crack at a Johnny Mandel song. Johnny Mandel, who passed away just a couple of weeks ago, I had the pleasure of knowing this man who brought a whole world of beautiful harmonies and the tunes he wrote, Emily and Time for Love and uh, here's one that I really love, it's called Close Enough for Love, Johnny Mandel. <laughs>
tossing up a love, Johnny Mandel. So, you know, I've been doing these uh, programs every Saturday for the last 17 weeks. I just got through doing one, playing and talking about a lot of wonderful memories over the years. I call it Reminiscing in Rhythm. It's been every Saturday at 4 o'clock on YouTube and Facebook. And I'm talking my head off, telling you stories about occasions when I was around Miles Davis, so I got to know quite well. When I also played for the great Frank Sinatra, when I was at Jilly's in New York, when I came to New York in the early 1960s, 1963 was the year. And um, then I started meeting all the great musicians of that period, 1963, meeting um, after Miles and Sinatra, of course all the musicians that were playing on, on the best clubs around town and played with Tony Williams and Ron Carter and Bob Cranshaw and Mickey Roker and Al Harewood and these are the salt of the earth guys who are back there making the band leader sound better than he would have sounded if he didn't have them. That's the way I like to put it. And that's how I learned a lot about life, music and uh, a lot of those guys were had that good old West Indian heritage, you know. and. Um, we always had a good meetup. I remember Roy Haynes, who came to the Jillies and played with me. He's from Barbados, you know, and he was a contemporary of Monk. And um, a lot of um, people that were about take care of business, you know, and make this music what it was. And I was there in the early 60s, sensing what was going on. This is before the advent of the academies that brought a whole new dynamic to the music world. Whereas the world I was picking up on were musicians who learned it from each other by just hanging out with each other, loving li life with each other. And that's what we heard on those recordings. You could feel the energy of the people and their friendship with each other and sometimes disagreements, I guess. That was in the music. Whereas today we have the great schools, but the trouble is that those young musicians are getting this great information, but mostly out of the school book from the teachers. Whereas back in those days, you kind of you sort of picked it up just from the air, you know. We call it the university of the street corner. So I was uh, an arrival young guy at 18 years young, being around those men, and um, I think I learned quite a few things. Not just piano playing, but life, you know, and how to what what to do when the club owner didn't pay you at the end of the week, for example. And that was then, right? Now is now and we have a whole better situation. But I could write a book, believe you me, about uh, the scene at the time. So not much more to say. I talked a lot. I played a little. Played a lot. Talked a little. I don't know. So I'm going to wrap this up by playing. I play another song. Is the time allowed? Yeah. You have, you have two minutes if we stick into the 730. And I'm I'm saying a special he hello to my good brother there, Mark Morganelli, Yay, Mark. who has been really flying the flag about the good music, marvelous musician himself, and a guy who wants to keep it alive. And I had the pleasure to play at the Jazz Forum on a couple of occasions, and I remember just feeling this is a perfect club in the tradition of the club when it's great, because that's where this jazz thing took off, you know, when we were in those clubs and the people were at the table and they even had a drink and they were maybe quietly saying, hey, hey, did you go to the store today, get the thing at the grocery shop? And hey, you know, meanwhile, the trumpet solo is going on and Forum is one of the good places today in America. Uh, it's not, you know, all rigid, it's loose, the piano is nice, I can enjoy playing the notes and um, Thanks to Mark for what he's doing, and we're all, we're all looking forward to doing when things settle back into a better situation for all of us. Because I had a lot of club dates and concerts in Europe and in India. Cancelled, folks. Postponed, that's the word. So once again, I wish you all the best, and thanks for tolerating my whatever you want to call it. Because... Uh, I'm just trying to make sense of it. And by the way, before we wrap this up, I'm going to invite my number one dearest best friend ever in life. And this is my wife, Katarina, from Rome, Italy. Same, same place Mark Morganelli's people come from. And as a special moment here, she's going to join me and do her wonderful vocalizing on a song maybe you have all heard. 
Nat King Cole's Unforgettable, where we will hear the sounds that reflect on some of our heroes of music. Katarina will join me. Will you join me? Yeah, but you're going to do your voices, right? You want my voices? Yes. Oh, you don't want that. We have voices, folks. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Here's the song. Yeah. That's what you are, Natalie. Unforgettable, no near how far. Like a song of love that clings to me, how the thought does things to me. Sarah, never before. Hey. Has someone been more? That's more. Unforgettable. That's a good In every way. You threw in Billy Holland in there? A little bit. And forevermore. That's how you stay. That's my darling. It's incredible that someone so unforgettable thinks that I am unforgettable. Bye for now. Hasta la vista. Arriba Dirci. See you soon. At See the Jazz Forum. Exactly. <laughs>